This is you. You're an ambitious athlete trying to run faster, jump higher, and be more agile and powerful. So what do you do? Well, of course, hit the gym to get big muscles. Indeed, when you think about someone that is extremely athletic, someone who can run fast and jump high, you probably think about people like this. Oh, hang on, not like that. Yeah, this guy doesn't look like he stepped foot into a gym a day in his life. He's so scrawny and he probably... is Jonathan Edwards and he holds the current world record in the triple jump which has stood since 1995 so that's almost 30 years it's so incredible watching this jump see him practically fly through the air I should also note that despite Edwards being a triple jumper his 100 meter sprint personal best is 10.48 which is very impressive Edwards doesn't look like the standard elite athlete and yet he's the goat so how can this be well, keep watching because in this video, I'll explain one of the main hidden qualities that Jonathan Edwards mastered and outline exactly how we can also enhance this quality. I'm just this skinny white guy. One main quality that explains Edwards' incredible athleticism is his elasticity, also sometimes called reactivity. Elasticity is not a property of our muscles, but rather our tendons. You may have heard of this idea before, but perhaps you're not exactly sure how it works. So let's dive in. Our tendons are elastic, which means that they have the ability to store energy. This is known as elastic potential energy. Think of an elastic band. When you stretch it, you store the energy in the material, and when you let it go, the energy is rapidly released. Our tendons also do this. This is because our tendons are made up of a material called Collagen. Collagen is a protein that has a fibril-like structure and when it is stretched, it stores energy ready to be released. The process of stretching a tendon and then having it release energy when it shortens is called the stretch shortening cycle, also called the SSC. This might sound complicated, but you can think of it like a rubber band that you stretch and release. I'll quickly note here that there are other aspects of the SSC, but in this video, I'll just be focusing on the tendons. The most important tendon when it comes to athletic performance is the Achilles tendon, which is the thickest and strongest tendon in the body. To demonstrate firsthand the power of the SSC, let's do a test. First, do a squat jump, which is where you start in a squat position and jump up as high as possible. Now, do a counter movement jump, which is where you start standing before lowering into a squat position and immediately exploding up to jump as high as possible. Which one made you jump higher? Well, the answer is the counter movement jump. And the reason behind this, or one of the reasons, is because the counter movement jump takes advantage of the elastic properties of the tendon. When you squat down first, we are loading up the tendons to store energy, which is released when we start to jump upwards. This helps us get an extra boost that allows us to jump higher. During the squat jump on the other hand, when you're pausing at the bottom, the potential energy stored in your tendons is slowly lost as they creep back, so to speak. In other words, while we can hold an elastic band for a while and it snaps back, our tendons don't quite work in the same way. They will not store energy for an extended period of time. Another example is when you're squatting, if you bounce at the bottom of your squat, then you're using the energy stored in your tendons to make the lift easier than if you paused at the bottom of the squat. Now the SSC isn't only relevant when jumping, rather it is active every single time you take a step or change direction, such as when you're sprinting or when you're involved in your team sport, etc. Every time your foot hits the ground, your Achilles tendon lengthens, storing energy. But here's the thing, not everyone's Achilles are made equal. Some Achilles are really good at storing and releasing this energy quickly, while others are not so good. For example, imagine a short and snappy elastic band that snaps back really fast when released, and compare this to a worn out, loose elastic band that doesn't do this. Athletes, of course, want to be aiming for the first type of Achilles. This is one of the secrets to Edward's incredible athleticism. When he hits the ground, he can store and release so much energy, which helps propel him forward. 
So how can you test the elasticity or reactivity of your own Achilles? Well, there are a couple of indicators, the main one being your ground contact times. This is simply the amount of time you spend in contact with the ground when you're jumping, sprinting, etc. Generally speaking, the more elastic your Achilles, the lower your ground contact times will be. This period can be very short, and in elite sprinters, we see ground contact times as low as 0.08 seconds or 80 milliseconds. There's also another metric that indicates how elastic or reactive you are, which is called the reactive strength index or RSI. Your RSI score can be calculated by doing a vertical jump on the spot like such, and then calculating the ratio of your flight time to your ground contact time. Research has shown that athletes with higher RSI scores are typically faster, more agile, and can jump higher than those with lower RSI scores. A couple of years ago, I used to have chronic ankle sprains, and in one season of futsal, which is basically like indoor soccer, I sprained both ankles four to five times each. Every time I would end up lying on the court, sometimes I'd be screaming in pain and I needed to have ankle supports and layers upon layers of ankle tape every time I played. Unsurprisingly, with such unstable and weak ankles, my RSI scores were horrible. Now today, I haven't had anything close to sprains for over one and a half years and my RSI scores, I think, are quite high. Whenever I analyze my sprinting using the Azide Performance sprinting software, I always do relatively well with my elasticity scores as my ground contact times are not too far off from elite sprinters. You can also see that the software assesses how good your technique or form is, which is of course very important in sprinting. That's why I'm gonna be releasing a video outlining the single best exercise to improve your sprinting form. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss that. Now coming back to my ankle journey, let's dive into what I did and what the science says about improving the elasticity of the lower leg. When it comes to improving sprinting or power output in general, the general wisdom is to focus on high quality and low quantity reps. However, when it comes to improving our elasticity, it is more so about volume. For example, the African Maasai people perform a type of jumping dance called the Odumu dance, and you can see how reactive they are after presumably performing thousands of reps with bare feet or near bare feet since an early age. Given all of this, one of my favorite exercises for building a more reactive lower leg is pogo jumps. These are basically standing in a single spot and jumping up and down, focusing on contacting the ground as little as possible. The reason I like these is because they're so low impact, you can perform these extensively, which is important to get in sufficient volume. You can basically perform these every day, potentially even multiple times if you want. I also like to incorporate assisted pogo jumps by using a band with the idea of reducing ground contact times even further. You can of course, and probably should, incorporate higher intensity plyometrics into your workouts, such as depth jumps. Just be careful with these as they're much more intense and so you definitely cannot do them every day like with pogos. Now let's talk about nutrition. While we can provide the stimulus to condition our tendons, we should also utilize what we know about collagen synthesis to ensure that we are training optimally. Dr. Keith Barr has done some now well-known research in this area and he found that supplementing such exercises with collagen itself as well as vitamin C resulted in a greater change in ligament strength. We noticed that when we increase the amount of proline and we increased the ascorbic acid in the media of our, of our cells, they actually got a whole lot stronger, the ligaments did. It does look like that the, the collagen synthesis component can be stimulated by, by um, collagen or, or hydrolyzed collagen or gelatin. This is because vitamin C is used as a cofactor in one of the steps in the biosynthesis of collagen itself. The protocol involves consuming around 15 grams of collagen with vitamin C 45 minutes to an hour before a sprint session or plyometric session, pogo jumps, etc. I like, for example, to mix the hydrolyzed collagen in with a couple of orange juice and then just drink that. Now, there's so much more to say on this topic that I couldn't include in this video, which is why I've created a fully comprehensive program that is designed to transform your elasticity. The course includes background information on elasticity, tendon conditioning, RSI monitoring, and much more. The course then provides a complete training program incorporating all elements and exercises necessary to help you improve tendon elasticity. Finally, it also covers nutrition and supplementation in detail, outlining exactly what is required to get 
get the most out of your training. And as a bonus, you'll also gain membership to a group of athletes that will get early access to an exciting new development coming soon that will further enhance your elasticity training. Whether you're a sprinter, footballer, basketball player, middle to long distance runner, or really any athlete looking to improve your elasticity, then this program is designed to be the perfect solution. The course is currently available for pre-sale at a discount, which will return to its full price one month after this video is published. However, as a thank you for watching this whole video, I'd like to offer you an additional 20% discount if you use the code YouTube24 at the checkout. If you're interested in the course, then you can find a link in the description. Now, I should mention that along with tendons, muscles are of course important too. And if you'd like to learn what the most important muscles are for being fast, you can check out this video here.